So you guys have all heard of that game, Stellar Blade, right? Everyone's talking about it right now. A lot of people are hyped. It looks like it'll be interesting. Oh my god, I have to burp. I'm, I'm on like the edge of having to burp and not having to burp. It's super weird. Um, Stellar Blade it looks like an interesting game. From what I can tell, it's a Souls-like. Which I know sounds surprising, but from what I can tell of the combat, it really looks like a mix of sort of like Sekiro, Bloodborne. It, it's definitely a Souls-like. And let's see if I can find a good trailer. Oh, apparently it's released already? It's already out? Huh. Man, maybe this game doesn't have as much hype as I thought. The Before You Buy video on Stellar Blade only has like 454,000 views. And the Stellar Blade full game playthrough uh, from Xanar Aesthetics only has 13,000 views in one day. Here's the official pre-order trailer, which only has 360,000 views. Uh, and I'm not saying it's, like, bad or anything like that. It's just interesting that, like, you go on Twitter and it seems like literally everyone is hyped for this game. It might actually just be a really loud minority of gooners. I feel like I've I've just had like a misconception shattered before your very eyes live. Um but yeah, it's basically horny dark souls. It's 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 one of those games that the gooners are going to absolutely love. Stop worrying when well, you are, do love. They do love it. So you play as a lady, and she breasts around boobily and butts around bootily. The graphics are very good. A lot of Welcome ass shots. Welcome to the world of Stellar Blade. The story begins on post-apocalyptic Earth where a mysterious enemy called the Nativa has forced the human race to flee to an off-world colony. Players will take control of Eve, a member of the 7th Airborne Squad. Her mission is to save the planet by defeating the Elder Nativa. All we must do... So yeah, it looks like a cool game. Near? I mean, it's it's basically like up that alley of like super breasty, boobily female, like ass kicking main characters that like the dudes who will play the games will like goon to, and there'll be a subsect of women who play it and defend the fuck out of like the the horniness of the dudes because they they like the games and they they also like pretty women, um, but in a less kind of creepy goonery way. Um, it, like, there, I don't really have anything against the game itself, and I frankly probably wouldn't have much, if anything, to say about it if it weren't for the fact that the people who are, uh, you know, going hard for it are just, like, the most annoying, insufferable gooners you've ever seen. The same types of gooners on the internet who do nothing but shit on and harass, like, OnlyFans girls on Twitter, and yet you can go to their likes and see, like, well, your likes are public, bro. Or you, or you know, they themselves are like subbing to them on OnlyFans, and meanwhile, they're the same ones who champion games like this, but complain about games being uh, more modest with female characters. They want like real women to be more modest, but they want fictional women to be sex dolls for them to jack off to. First and foremost, they must be attractive, pretty to look at, in their opinion. Doesn't matter if the woman in question looks like a real woman that exists, even through the mocapping, they will complain if the woman is not their level of appreciable attractiveness. And so I really wouldn't have much to say about the game if it weren't for these people until this, uh, until this drama happened. The game almost seemed like it was being sort of artificially shelved as sort of some kind of uh not shelved but like put up on the shelf as some kind of like rival to the woke game devs or something like that but this story makes me wonder if maybe behind the scenes there is more support for that idea among the creators of stellar blade um at the very least this is an indication of some interesting interesting workplace culture i'll say the least that this got through 
Stellar Blade Hard R Controversy Explained. Stellar Blade's hard R controversy caused a backlash from players, leading to developers shift up, fixing the blunder almost immediately. But let's look up what caused the problem in the first place. Uh, it was a very simple thing. It's just a dumb N-word joke. Basically, there's just a a there, there's a graffiti that says hard, and that's like graffitied, and then right next to it, there's a sign that says R that's lit up. And so, like, they said it was a coincidence. This is probably a coincidence, in my opinion. Nah. Nah, the, the graffiti says hard, and then right next to it, R, glowing. I mean, it's possible. There's definitely a possibility, but I think there was probably some dev, probably a single dev who made that joke um, and just hit it in there for a funny meme. But then again, there is some cultural divide here. Isn't it a, um, I think a Korean developer is the one behind this? It's being published by Sony and produced by a Korean dev. Uh, I, I actually don't know what the team's called. And I think this is what I remember. Regardless, I, I doubt there's some heavy attachment to, like, right-wing culture war stuff. But I do think this gives the right a little more grounds to try to claim this game. And while I don't really think there's much to all of this, I, I do think it's funny that the right, upon hearing this story, instead of being like, Ah, yeah, see? The people who made this game are on our side. Instead, they had a meltdown about the the dev team changing it yeah it's shift up it's a korean company ah thank you glad to see i was right so basically with tons of great reviews under stellar blades belt and a ton of interest in the ps5 exclusive everything has been smooth sailing so far oh, okay that explains why the views are so low it's a ps5 exclusive yeah like but unless it's the only way to get your game out signing it on to exclusivity to a console is uh it's a, it's a rough rough thing. Also, you can't mod it. You can't you can't mod the game. The Gooners are gonna like absolutely fall off of this shit when you can't mod it. Like the fuck. Um, even with the eyebrows raised at Eve's skin suit and her other outfits, Stellar Blade's intense experience is appealing to many. Stepping away from the game's core for a second, though, we need to address the hard R controversy, which is yet. Another discourse Stellar Blade has been swept up in. God, I really don't care much about this discourse, but you know what I will say? I don't disagree with the idea of stu of games like this existing. This is the skin suit. It's the one where they, they designed it to show as much skin as they feasibly could show off without, uh, like, pussy and titties. Um, mind you, this is a, P a PlayStation exclusive, which means I believe nudity of that sort, like making this just an outright porn game is not allowed because it's a console game. Um, if they wanted that, it would have to be on Steam. Like literally, Steam will oftentimes have the top game of the day being a porn game. It's hilarious. Um, regardless though, I, I don't have any problem with this existing, but do you guys ever feel like the desire by gamers to like pigeonhole gaming into being this again? is kind of doing a disservice to gaming as a whole. I know it's what they want, but for a long time, I remember when the whole point of being a gamer was, yes, there was this dumb, like, uh, my, not, what, what's it called? Uh, victim complex that gamers had, but to some degree it was somewhat justified because the most popular games, if you looked at the internet, were like Minecraft and things like that and yet if you looked at like the mainstream media's coverage of gaming it was typically a lot more negative and not even close to accurate like you'd get some story about a kid who took a gun and a hammer to school and then when they questioned the kid the kid said that he did it because of minecraft and the parents like believed it and the media believed it and so you get that one famous story from 2013 where they say where it's like ah yeah, the kid Brought a gun to school, a weapon you can craft in the hit game Minecraft, which is popular with children, and also made a hammer, a weapon often used by players in the game. And it's just like the, the person who wrote the article is just absolutely making shit up about Minecraft to fit the narrative of the story, like Minecraft caused it. Like, this was the era of gaming where it was like, God, it would be nice if the mainstream took gaming seriously. But now we're in an era where these popular games that, like, to give you an idea, before a couple days ago, when I showed my mom the Fallout show, my mom didn't know what Fallout was. 
She didn't know what that was. Now she does. Same goes for like League of Legends before Arcane came out. And that was one of the the biggest game in the world, possibly, or one of the biggest games in the world. Um, I think a lot of people undercredit how much of a barrier there is, a divide culturally between like your more traditional Gen X like normies that maybe go and see a new movie every once in a while or watch a new show every once in a while and like the gaming community and how much of a gap there is in the types of stories that are told and it feels so unfortunate that now we're seeing like a broader acceptance of like gaming as a concept and the stories and the franchises that have been like beloved in gaming you got you know fallout the last of us you could go down the list we've, we've gotten a lot of bangers lately um and yet i feel like this kind of represents an era of gaming that gave credence to those that refused to take it seriously. Does anyone agree with that? Does anyone get like get what I'm saying? Like, do you remember back when like God of War 2 released and they had that one scene where Kratos uses, or maybe it was God of War 3, and Kratos uses like some slave of Poseidon to like hold open a gate with the gears and, and like as you walk away, you hear her body get like ripped in half and she was just an innocent woman. And, like, Kratos, like, mourns that and, and, like, is upset about having done that in the newer games. But it's, like, the fact that they had him do that goes to show that they plan they never had plans to truly redeem him. And that was just meant to be sort of, like, how games are. Oh, we want to make a gritty game. Let's just have a woman get ripped in half by the main character for no reason. Isn't that raw? Isn't that brutal? And I'm sure some people might call me a prude for having a problem with that. Or, or not even a problem, but just kind of criticizing it. Um, but I think the newer God of War games would agree with me, frankly. Um, the fact that, uh, like, a lot of, like, the entire idea of it is deconstructing Kratos and those, that old era of gaming. I feel like so many newer games, and, like, they're meant to mature the franchises from the sort of childish era that we experienced in, like, the 2010s and early 20, like, the 2000s and early 2010s. And it's really unfortunate that so many people are, like, it's not that this existing is the problem, but so many people feel that if this is not the majority of women in gaming, then there's a problem. Because to them, gaming is and has always been and will always be a boys club. And these game companies should be making what their audiences want to see, which is this. Mind you, obviously women make up a pretty significant amount of... Uh, of gamers at this point but regardless koreans may know may know not exactly but k-pop complaints about using the n-word that is korean I means sounds bad adhd typing oh, i get it i get it yeah no i remember that there was like a um there was like a drama over the fact that the word you in korean is just like it's just the n-word in in pronunciation I don't know how it's spelled, but in pronunciation, you in Korean is just straight up the N-word. I'm not I'm not even joking. It, it just is. That's how you say you in Korean um, with a soft A pretty much. And so a lot of Korean like K-pop bands kind of get like a big cancellation drama every once in a while when uh, the K-pop stands forget that you in Korean is that. Listen, I get it. I get it, Balth. I get it, Balth. I get it, Balth. You, you are a hardcore defender of the old God of War games as being more deep than 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 people think. I get that, and I understand. But I'm making a point right now. I'm making a point. Oh my fucking god! That's like Zan. I've been trying to articulate this to people since around 2014 or so, without coming off as demanding to uh, the multiplayer only multiplayer only crowd. Um, yeah, it's just it's really weird because for me, it's like I. I want gaming to be taken more seriously as an art form. And that used to always be the thing that gamers wanted. Like, you went into discussions around gaming, and um, and it's just like everybody wants people to take it more seriously. And yet there were a lot of things about old older games in particular that are now, like, expected to be the standard um, culturally that I feel were a bit... Not toxic, but just the kind of thing that lends credence to people not wanting to take them seriously. And just pushing, like, negative stereotypes about what gamers are. And now you've got that crowd wanting to gatekeep. They want to enforce that gatekeeping and enforce that barrier. Um, so, yeah. 
play Mass Effect or Dragon Age. I'll definitely have to try those out. But yeah, regardless, um, it's really hilarious, though, that the right has had to, like, latch on to this game as some sort of cultural touchstone against wokeness. Like, it's not anti-woke to be a game with a sexy woman if it's, like, like where is it? Is it anti-woke to be against sexy women in real life but in favor of sexy women when they're fictional but it's woke to like real life sexy women and to not like fictional sexy women is that like the dichotomy that they are setting up i suppose if i have to fit into that like box that i'm being shoved into as woke as like not liking fictional sexy women but liking and promoting real-life sexy women. I guess I would prefer that side of the box to be shoved into, but I don't think... I don't think that's... I don't think that's what woke and not woke is. I think woke is just what these people call anything bad. Anyway, Nick Calandra posted this, saying, I'm sorry I can't get trolled so hard and is so... I'm sorry, I can't. He got trolled so hard and is so angry about it. Oh my god, I'm trying to die... Not to die laughing at this. Might be the funniest interaction I've seen on this platform. I love a good troll. Back to watching Tokyo Vice. And um, it's Grums getting trolled, apparently. Let's check this out. Update. Lance McDonald at fight Man Fight Dragon lifted his block to reach out to me. Quoted with permission. Quote, hey, I saw you tweeted a bunch about my Stellar Blade screenshot. A bunch of people noticed that funny graffiti like a week or two ago. And we're all laughing about it because blank, blank, blank. Um, and then Lance McDonald replies, thanks for clearing all that up, Grums. Make sure to remind your followers to follow and subscribe to my Twitch channel at twitch.tv Lance McDonald for all the latest uh, censorship and being offended I can muster. <laughs> Should be a fun stream. Lots to talk about. I love this interaction. I loved it too because if you're familiar with Lance, then you know he's trolling the shit out of Grums and using him while all Grums fans are saying, bravo, sirs. Oh no, wait, is this guy... I mean, obviously the last bit says censorship and being offended I can muster. Um, like, it's already obvious this person is trolling him. I, I, I can't tell if he's... Oh my god, he's actually having a boomer moment. That's what's happening here. He doesn't realize that this dude's just fucking with him. He thinks he's actually gonna go on to a show. I deleted at Manfight Dragon's response to it, to his posting of the hate, hard R screenshot in Stellar Blade. After working together to update my post with his answers and making nice on Twitter, he spent the next hour in his Discord slamming me. I don't believe a word he says now. Lamau, he joined the server. That's so fucking funny. This is not a safe space for him. Wait, well, he just got led through... Haha, uh, you joined my Discord and got bullied for being a massive grifter piss baby. Come crying back to your safe space. You're a liar. You leaked it. Oh my god. They baited him into a Discord call and bullied the shit out of him and he ran away. Deleted Lance McDonald's re uh, replies. And now he's like cope quote tweeting. Mm. I covered this guy's long history as a grifter. In the gaming industry. I'm really glad people are starting to direct more attention at this guy. He needs to be bullied. I don't think he can actually take it either. Like, I think Grums might crumble being bullied. The thread actually continues on. I've got the original thread here now. Love how this dude thinks me hating him and saying mean stuff is confirmation. I'm part of a secret game journalist cabal to woke the video games. Complete paste for brains. Here is the gist of the outcome of my DMs with Grums, if anyone cares. This weirdo has no effect on me, nor does his bizarre fantasy. If he wants to go on a strange adventure, good for him. There was no make nice, Lamau. He said a bunch of uh, stupid shit, and that's the whole story. Okay, I can post an update. I won't post any DMs, of course, but is there a statement you would like to release? I don't think there's any statement to say. I have nothing to do with this other than thinking a screenshot is funny. The entire narrative you invented by... The entire narrative was invented by you. You're welcome to correct yourself in any way you like. It has no effect on me. I think this is Grums. Does it go on? Oh, the Grums fans. 
question everything, trust no one, ask questions, seek answers, gamer since 1996, favorite genres, CRPG, ARPG, hack and slash, and MMORPG, verified on, pays $8 a month for Twitter with 62 followers. Ah, yes, that's a Grums follower, all right. That's definitely a Grums follower. Dude, it's so sad, um... It, it's so sad to see that people fall for the grift of somebody like Grums. Like, everything about this guy, like, down to his profile picture. Am I the only one that sees his profile picture as, like, ridiculously punchable? I can't be the only one, right? Like, you've seen a picture of the guy in real life. There's just something almost, like, creepy about how he uses this, like, cutesified, like, cat mouth uwu drawing of himself. Like, he's a 50-something or 40-something... No, yeah, 50-something-year-old man who's balding. Like, they couldn't even hide the, the receding hairline <laughs> in his fucking, uh... in his thing. I, I don't know, it's just... I find it funny. I find it funny. God, Grums. Hopefully he gets crushed by the full weight of internet bullying in the near future. Actually, in Minecraft, I do not endorse internet bullying. Do not harass him. Do not harass him. Don't do it. Don't harass him. Anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this segment, please consider leaving a like. It really does help a lot. Seriously, it, I mean it. it. Seriously, every single like goes a long way on videos, on streams, on VODs, no matter what you're watching. If you haven't liked already, hit that like button. It really means a lot to me. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell icon if you haven't already so that YouTube tells you when I go live or upload a new video. It will not do that otherwise, and it makes my sub count go up. I want to hit 100,000 subs by the end of the year, so helps a lot if you do that. And of course, if you want to support me, you know, a little further, you can always donate, subscribe, or gift a sub if you can afford it on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. It helps a whole lot if you do that. And of course, you can also support me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, and you can buy merch through the Streamlabs link down below in the description. And of course, do not forget to join my free Discord server where we do all sorts of events all the time, including watch parties, call-in streams, and sometimes I even do just gaming events in there. So if you want to join that, there's a link down below in the description, as there is to everything I just listed, and uh, I hope to see you there. Please consider joining.